This is the continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Warner Anderson as Matthew Swain, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, and Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson. For the people of Peyton Place, this has been a long, bleak winter. For some, the season has been particularly harsh and chilling. But winter does end, and spring does follow. The season of planting. The season of growing. Constance McKenzie and Elliot Carson have every reason to greet this spring with joy, because it brings, at long last, fulfillment to them both. Oh, you'll do fine, Miss Devon. Reverend Bedford, are you sure this is appropriate music for a wedding? I think they'll like it. It's by Chopin. Well, at least there could have been one rehearsal. Mr. Carson and Mrs. McKenzie asked it to be a simple ceremony. Well, in that case, I can't understand why you shouldn't choose simple music. I've got some perfectly lovely pieces right here which are entirely suitable. Fine, Miss Devon, whatever you decide. Oh, thank you. Oh, very nice. Did you arrange them yourself? Yes. Usually someone from the family comes in to do that. It's a pity you can't start out here in Peyton Place with a real spring wedding. With ushers and bridesmaids and everything. Miss Devon, I feel a real wedding occurs whenever a man and a woman come into a church who really want to get married. supposed to help a son on a day like this. Not me. I'm strictly an open neck man. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'd come all the way from Florida just to get strangled. <laughs> I'm glad you did come, Dad. So am I, Harriet. Oh. I don't plan on going back. Oh? I belong right here in Peyton Place. Well, according to Dr. Rossi... Dr. Rossi said I couldn't take the winters. Fine. Winter's gone. I'm here. By next fall, I'll be able to take Alaska. You just wait and see. <laughs> well, whatever you say, Dad. Oh, my roots are here, not way down there on some sandy beach. And mine. I won't trouble you. Well, of course you won't. I'll take my old room by the chancery. It won't bother you and Connie. You could never be a bother to me, and you know it. <laughs> so you're going to rent this place, huh? I won't be coming back here after today. No, Dad, there's too many unpleasant memories here. I think we'll be much happier at Constance's house. Hmm? Maybe. Well, after all, it's more convenient to town. College for Allison. You don't have to justify it to me, have you? Well, I'm not justifying anything, Dad. That's what I mean. Son, I wish you ever happiness. You know that. My only worry is, well, you're taking on a lot of responsibility as husband, father, head of the family. Now, that's something that every man needs to be a whole man, but most men have a chance to assume this gradually over a period of years. Oh, I see what you're talking about. You mean that I can't expect the same authority that I, I'd have otherwise? Exactly. Connie's been living alone, managing her own affairs for 18 years, and Allison, well, she's had no one but her mother to answer to. Now, with you coming into their house, 
Well, Connie and I have discussed it thoroughly, Dad. We're both aware that there might be pitfalls and dangers ahead. But we're both very much in love. All right. I'm just an old man who thought he ought to say something to his son on his wedding day. Well, just say good luck and I'll know that no one in the world could say it with more honesty. My wife and my daughter, Kim. How do you do, Mr. Harrington? How do you do? I don't think we're late, are we? No. Uh, ordinarily, the real estate people would have turned the house over to you, but I wanted to do it myself. See, my brother and I are going to continue living in Peyton Place, and I didn't want you to hear rumors that we were upset or unhappy. Well, that's very kind. Well, if you like, I'll show you around the house. Uh, no, I wouldn't put you to that trouble. No, thanks anyway. Will you excuse me? If there's anything I can do. What can I do? Sir? For you. I know this must be difficult. It is. Well, we'll be living here, but I won't think of this as our house. Mr. Schuster, it is your house. For the time being. Yes, sir. If someone calls from upstairs, can you hear it down here, Mr. Harrington? You might if the doors were left open. I don't think it's a problem, though. We'll have to put an intercom in Kim's room, David. Well, we'll talk about it. We can send to Boston for it, I think. You can probably get anything you want right here in town. I was born and raised in a small town, Mr. Harrington. Will I need the keys? I'd like to go through the house. Nothing is locked, and uh, these are all the keys. Kim, sit down here and wait for me. Uh, Mr. Schuster, someone will be by for these things. They belong to my brother and myself. Oh, yes, of course. My wife is a little tired. Uh, moving has been a strain. She's a bit on edge. You don't have to explain to me, Mr. Schuster. In this town, you won't have to explain to anyone. You'll run the mill. Is it that simple? Oh. I keep this. Of course. Why did you even have to ask? Well, it was attached to the house. Well, so were you. Goodbye, Mr. Schuster. Goodbye. Be sure and come again. Goodbye, Mrs. Schuster. I, I hope you find everything in order. I'm sure we will. Goodbye, Mr. Harrison. Congratulations, you established your social superiority. Well, he had no right to be here. I know about small towns, David. This is not his house. This is Martin Payton's house. We have it from Martin Payton, not from the Harringtons. You may not understand these things, but I do. I don't want him here in my house, handing over the keys as though he were lord of the manor. There are other ways of doing it. I don't want to fight with you. I know it's lonely. I know it's lonely. A new place always is. But 
that you'd be surprised how fast you can get to know a place. You'll say, I'll show you. You'll take a walk, and I'll show you the square. something I admire, Mr. Mackenzie. Oh. I used to resent her. She seemed so cool and so tranquil. She wasn't. I know, but now I admire her. For what? Well, for having a church wedding, for getting married right here in Peyton Place. That takes a lot of courage. Well, Connie has always had a lot of courage. Well, she and Elliot Carson could have run off somewhere like Rod and I did. They could have been married by a justice of the peace, but they're willing to face people. Not people, Betty. Friends. You look lovely. You know, if Rod and I had been able to face our friends, we might have been happier. I wonder. I don't know, you may be right. But I'll admit something. Something kind of silly and sentimental. For all the unhappiness Rod and I went through, I've... I've always been sorry that we didn't have a church wedding. Strange for you, huh? What's that? Oh, this. Us. Well, a little. It's not an everyday occurrence, you know. Helping your mother get dressed for her wedding, you mean? No, that's not quite what I meant. Yeah, don't fidget. You know, someday I'll be helping you get dressed for your wedding. Yeah, all finished. You look beautiful. What gloves will you be wearing with that? Oh, uh, the little white ones, left hand drawer. Wonderful being part of a whole family for the first time. We have so much to make up for. We're going to be so happy. You'll see. Nobody will see anything if you don't get a move on. Uncle Matt will be here in a little while. I better get dressed, too. <laughs> 